There we go. All right. It says we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome again to Astronomy Daily Live. And just for your amusement, I've got a kitty that's slowly creeping. Uh, he wants a little bit of the hydrogen hydroxide, but uh, that ain't going to happen. So welcome. There's a kitty tail. Yay. Hello, kitty tail. <laughs> So hope everybody's doing doing well um, today. Things are good good here. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, you know, just a normal day. Um, you know, nothing exciting. It's cloudy. Um, might actually get some rain tomorrow. But I heard sort of long term um, forecast says that uh, that uh, I should be getting some clear skies here over the next few few days. Um, I really wish that weather forecasters, you know, um, along with 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 you know making these you know, predictions, you know, which are based on models, right? Um, that they would provide their level of confidence, right? So you know, when they say that, right? Okay, today's Monday, right? Um, when they say, okay, Friday we have a 50% chance of rain, okay? Well, that that makes them sound as though they're 100% sure about that, right? When in truth, their confidence level might be only 10%, right? So I think the reason why they don't do that is because most people uh, wouldn't really understand what they're talking about, right? But I, I don't know about that. Right. I mean, if I said that there there's a 50 percent um, chance of rain on Friday and I'm 10 percent confident that that is is true. I think a lot of people would actually understand that, but maybe not. You know, maybe I'm making an assumption, you know, that people are, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, knowledgeable about those kinds of things. Um, but uh, I really wish they. They would, you know, because in truth, um, the the confidence in these weather models drops drops dramatically over over a very very short um, period of time. You can make a pretty good prediction a couple of hours out, but even even one day out, um, confidence levels drop by at least half, and by the time um, um, you get a week out or a month out, um, confidence is is almost zero, right? But, you know, everybody expects, you know, the weather people, you know, to make these kinds of predictions, and then they complain when they're not wrong. And it's because uh, we are not actually provided, you know, the kind of information um, um, we need. But at the same time, right, if that same um, weather person is only, you know, five percent um, confident in in you know the prediction, you know that it's going to rain on um, Friday, um, uh, that sort of you know ruins credibility. So so you know it's like you know would you rather you know be mad at the weatherman you know, because he's not right or um, not confident in in them. So, so, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know how I got off on that, but welcome everybody. I'm just sort of stalling. I like to let, you know, people sort of, sort of, um, um, come in here before I actually dive into things. So I hope everybody's doing, doing well. This is just a fun, casual, um, get together of friends every single day. Um, you know, feel free to come in whenever you like. I, I will be here practically every day practically every day. Um, and, and yeah, you know, I've officially um, um, been doing this for an entire year now. And um, I should probably go and look and see how many days I missed. But I want to say that maybe, maybe about 10 or so, maybe a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure. That's not too bad. Um, and that, you know, that just says a lot for you know my my extremely uh, um, 
non-eventful life, right? Don't have a lot um, going on, but that's that's exactly how I like it. So yes, yeah, so I hope everybody's doing doing well. So on the panel once again is Bobby. Hey, what's going on? Hey, 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 hey. what's up, everybody? How's everything over there? Uh, not that much here. Didn't watch TV that much and stuff. I was actually was monitoring my uh, my uh, two meter amateur repeater. And it had some great activity before I, before I turned it off and switched it to my uh, switched it to shortwave. Oh, cool! Oh, cool! Yeah, um, my um, um, my boss today he got a uh, I had a, an R R R R D forty R B forty. It's some kind of a uh, um, 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 some kind of an antenna that um can be used both for the 10 meter band um and the citizens band um you know which is you know where he sort of wants to be at this point so so uh um you know uh it's some kind of magnetic thing you know that he can stick onto his car and and uh uh um yeah you know so he's um 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 pretty excited about about that so so yeah cool 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 well Welcome, Bobby. Glad you could come in. You've you've come in almost almost every single every single day here. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. And that's, um, hey, that's what you get when uh, you actually are like not working but um, getting some form of income. There you go. There you go. You know, I I think that's great. Yeah. You know, I wish you know that more people could could you know, do what they wanted, right? And not necessarily have to worry about, you know, doing things they don't want to do, you know, a lot of the time. So a little bit of the time, you, they can actually do what they want. I would like a society where, you know, most of us um, are doing exactly what we want. Uh, I think that 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 is absolutely great. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we're moving that that way, you know, slowly. So, so uh, yeah, very, very awesome, very, very cool. All right. Well, speaking of extremely awesome, I, I just wanted uh, this a little bit of a story time, I guess. I was um, 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 back, sort of thinking about my um, photometry project, and and I actually grabbed. I went into the archives. And I grabbed one of my notebooks that I had as a student. And um, you can see um, here's, here's an entry, just, just proof that I'm showing you the, here I sort of have to zoom in a little bit here. You can see the date, the date right there, 10th of April, 1991, okay? So yeah, and actually this thing goes back. Let me see what the first entry is. Wow, look at that. 731.89. So yeah, let's see. That that was um that was actually um so that was like a year and a half after I started um working at this particular place. So, wow, it took me a year and a half to actually get a notebook going. <laughs> but um, what what I had done um, is I had actually um, written down some, some notes and some math, um, you know, working out all this um, photometric stuff. And, you know, um, I was looking at this and it's like, I wonder where I got all this information from, you know, because, you know, this writing really wasn't, wasn't, wasn't me. Right. And I was writing down a bunch of equations and everything. It's almost as if I was sort of, you know, transcribing from some, some book. Right. And so I'm like, you know what? I wonder if, well, yeah, because things like this, right? 
this is a quote, right? I mean, I've put this in a quote, right? There's a beginning quote and an end quote, right? So this is a quote from somewhere, from something, right? And it's like, you know, of course I didn't write down anything about um, where I got all this information, all this math and all these words and everything. So I'm like, I wonder, I wonder if, if, um, if um, I went to Google, right? And I typed in the word photometry and then in quotes, I actually typed in this, this first, this first line here. I typed in the whole thing, right? Just this first line, right? In quotes. And, woo, I went blurry. There we go. Um, and lo and behold, one entry came back, one line. You know how you usually do a Google search and you get, you know, like 1.8 million things, right? I got one thing back, one thing back. And you know what it was? <laughs> It was a book that I had completely forgotten about until I saw it again. And I saw that author's name and I went, I remember that. I, yeah, I had completely, completely forgotten about this most amazing book. And so what I want to do, I actually went, they actually had a PDF um, file of this book where someone had gone in and you know basically just photocopied the book right so so it wasn't actual like like text you know like a regular um pdf file but it was a pdf file that had this entire book in it right and so of course i downloaded it it's like 600 and some um pages but I just want to share this with you because you know this this book is is I I I highly 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 recommend it um, if you want to you know gain a little bit of understanding of you know the science of astronomy and and uh, you know what's involved in doing um, research. Um, you think you should be in by checking the chat and then show some people in the chat first? Oh, I probably should. Is there somebody over in the chat? Yes, of course. So ERRT Radio. Hey there, Justin T. Cheers and peace. Nine Inch Colas. Hey, nice to see you again. Uh, yeah. Well, very cool. Glad everybody's There's here. There's also Tom in the chat, but he's not going to be. I don't know. I don't hey, know Tom. He's going to be on the panel. Yeah. Hey there, Tom. Hey there, Tom. Nice to see and, you in the uh, chat. Bert and Ron from Earth Radio, he's got himself a new board working thanks to his friends that help producer Bill help, Melissa help, and help me get it running. Very cool. Very cool. Is this... So it looks like, uh, Ryan, this, you got yourself a new computer. That's good. He's stepping on up. Is this a, a new mixer board? Is that what you're talking about, Ron? Um uh yeah yeah i my my guess is is that that's probably what he's um talking about anyway so i'm going to share my screen because i just want to show you this this great 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 book um oh it's okay, a I gotta, soundboard i got a okay yeah yeah so it's a mixer board cool very cool multi-channel you can put in all kinds of effects and stuff um you can mix in some some music and uh ron i i i am thinking about your your uh your offer and uh yeah i think uh i think i want to try to get you some stuff uh relatively soon so so um stay tuned for that you know i'll get a hold of you offline here all right i'm going to share my screen and so here's the book it's called astronomical techniques and it's it's a a um, a series of of uh, articles, I guess you can call it, um, that were put together by um, Hiltner, and it's that name that I had completely just uh, uh, 
not remembered at all. But this this is a uh, a fantastic thing, and this is actually volume two, right? It's called Stars um, and Stellar Systems, right? So I mean, it's all about uh, well, stars and stellar systems. And here are the contributors, right? So each one of these um, people sort of have their own chapter. Um, and, uh, you know, come to think of it, I'm not quite sure how many volumes there are in astronomical techniques. I wonder, I wonder if we can find that out really, really quick. Um, now that I'm Diving into this a little bit, let's let's find out. I I don't really even know. Um, so yeah, let's go back to Google. Hiltner uh, astronomical techniques techniques, and let's see if we can um, find out. Of course, it it looks like. Um, it looks like it's available on Amazon. Um, so maybe let's just go there and and see. Wow, it's a that's a pretty good deal too. If that's if that's true or not, I have a hard time doing that. Now this is from 1966. The one that I've got is actually from 1962. So I'm not really seeing anything there. Let's see. See, here's volume two. Um, here's a Google book. Yeah, see, this is all just talking about volume two, volume two. So, yeah, you know what? I am not exactly sure how that was um, put together. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I just wanted to show off the book. Um, so, you know, as you can see here, it's basically, you know, just a photocopy. And I remember this color, right? This color was was you know the color of you know the binding, and of course you know here's the edge of the book here, um, and then here's you know the other side. Um, so yeah, you know, like I said, you know these aren't these aren't actual text things. They're they're just um, images that have been put into uh, um, put into uh, um, a um, um, PDF form, and so they have these these great um, chapters, right? Telescopes, astronomical techniques, basic astronomical data. Uh, it just it, you know it just goes on and on, right? On and on. Here's all the contributors, right? Um, I don't really I don't really recognize a lot of names here. Uh, Sharpless, that rings a bell. Um, Hardy, um, for sure, because that is the chapter that I sort of um, um, focused on. Uh, but yeah, here let's uh, let's go through this a little bit here. Um, so you can see there's the preface. Uh, where's the where's the actual Okay, so here's the table of contents. I thought somewhere in here we could see the uh, the publication date. Here it is, 19, 1962, 1962. So, you know, this goes back a ways, but it's it. Uh, most of this, I gotta say, is uh, is pretty relevant even today, right? You know, the basic understanding of things hasn't really, really changed. You know, they didn't have things back then like CCDs, right? You know, CCDs were were still, uh, as far as I know, just, just not a thing, right? You know, the best thing that they had at the time were um, photomultipliers, which are these, uh, uh, um, Tubes, you know these 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 uh, um, like these vacuum tubes um, that were extremely sensitive to to light, and you could actually turn those into what's called a photon counter, where you know it, um, these devices you know would actually 
count photons as they come into the telescope. So yeah, great table of contents. Um, each um, chapter um, was sort of written by, you know, different people, right? So, so you know, here's, here's Baum and Bowen and, but yeah, you know, look at these uh, things, okay? You know, so, you know, detection and measurement of faint sources, spectrographs, um, radial velocity um, determinations, right? Spectrophotometry, measurement of stellar magnetic fields, photomultipliers, um, photoelectric um, 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 photometers and amps, photoelectric reductions. This is the chapter I was most interested in, you know, because it gets into extinction and air mass, um, color indices, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so <laughs> here we go. An application of an electronic calculator um, to photoelectric um, reductions. And look at that. It talks about uh, the IBM 650. Now that's, of course, way, be, uh, way before my time. I wonder uh, if anybody in the chat um, remembers what an IBM 650 is. I Yeah, I'd like to sort of glance at that chapter um, really, really quick and see what that's all, all about. Um, polarization measurements, that's extremely important. Um, uh, instrumentation for uh, infrared, very cool. Um, direct recording of stellar spectra. See, you know, they had no CCDs, right? So how, um, you know, when you wanna look at a spectrum of something, um, you either had to use at the time, you know, some kind of photographic film, um, or I guess, you know, there might be a way, you know, they're talking about some kind of way of um, doing that. Um, here you go, image um, detection. I'm gonna zoom in a little, a little bit here. By television signal generation, wow. Awesome, awesome stuff. You know, I mean, uh, is any of this you know sort of useful or relevant um, today? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. You know, we have um, probably better ways of doing it. But I always find it uh, extremely enlightening um, in sort of you know trying to understand you know today's technology by looking at you know technology of the past um which which might now you know be a little bit easier to understand right so so uh yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool um uh image orthicon i don't even know what image orthicon is hmm um image converters for um, photography uh, photographic um, photometry, right? So, so yeah, you know, before um, CCDs, you know, being able to take an image of the sky, you just had to use a photograph, right? But um, they could do really, really, really good um, photometric stuff that way. Just uh, hard, hard to do it. Um, measuring engines, that's a uh, um, um, measuring you know, the positions of things. Uh, um, one of these I actually used, uh, they had these at the uh, um, Tucson offices of um, um, Kit Peak um, down in the basement. They had some copies of the entire um, Palomar Sky Survey and right next door was this uh, huge, huge device they called the um, Grant Machine. And it was a way of um, um, measuring the positions and brightnesses of things um, from these, these, these plates. Uh, let's see, yep. 
techniques for um, visual um, 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 measurements. Yeah, very cool. Micrometers, interferometers, astrometry for astrographs. Cool. So a lot of these things are still um, relevant, you know, measuring the positions of things, measuring the brightnesses of things. That hasn't changed. Um, so astrometry with long focus um, telescopes, huh? Uh, Peter Van de Kamp, I recognize that that name. Uh, don't remember exactly from from where. Orbit um, um, determination of um, visual um, binaries, very cool. Orbital elements of spectroscopic um, binaries, eclipsing binaries. So yeah, you know, as I said, you know, a lot of these things are pretty relevant even today, right? You know, I mean, if you're looking at a binary star, you know, the orbit is the orbit, right? And that that hasn't changed. Um, you know, our ability in terms of you know um, um, precision and all that has has changed. But the basic math hasn't hasn't changed at all. Um, now, as you can probably tell, this book is is uh, you know very 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 um, mathematical. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot of really heavy math in this. Um, it's kind of like a bit crazy, but but the way they did that book that they they didn't and the computers were just like not that very popular and stuff like that. So doing it that kind of way, it, it's kind of like yeah. back, back at the time, but things change over time. Thing, things change. And yeah, you know, I mean, back then, um, you know, computers were, you know, mainframes that, 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 you know, uh, you, you had, you know, extremely limited access to. And, and uh, that's, that's actually, um, I'm kind of curious about that computer chapter. Uh, let's... You know what's kind of like a bit crazy about computers back in the day is like, can you like really afford a computer if it's like, like maybe 3000 or 6000 or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and these computers, I mean, I assume, you know, the IBM um, 650, I was probably tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So let's see, let's go to page 209. It's probably gonna be not exactly the same page, but it'll, yeah, so that got us to page 184. So let's, uh, we'll just sort of page forward here and get to page two, 209 eventually here. There's 189. I'm just kind of um, curious about this computer chapter here it's a big book right i mean right, as you can andy see here yeah. hey there andy 662 page book right so this was a monster book uh but kind of curious to see this computer section here especially because you know we do have a few computer people uh on this live stream. So, so, uh, I'm definitely a computer person too. So, uh, I like to see all this, all this stuff. All right, here, here we go. So an application of an electronic calculator to photoelectric reductions. So the IBM 650 magnetic drama data processing machine. <laughs> wow. Um, is a stored program calculator, i.e. the instructions um, um, which the machine is to perform are stored in um, coded form um, um, in the machine's memory. Cool. 80 columns, 80 columns. Uh, the FITS standard, right? Uh, every single row, you know, the header part of a FITS um, file uh, is maximum 80 columns long. And this is actually one of the places where 
that comes from, you know, because the computers were like, okay, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> Five cards, um, the earliest CD, CD that you ever would see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Earth Medical Units Control what? Console. There we go. There's a punch card for you. Woohoo! IBM card containing the following information. All right. Can I, uh, is there a way to rotate this? I don't. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to rotate this. Ah, rotate right. There we go. So an IBM card containing the following information. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit more here so we can see it. Oh, maybe that's, oh yeah, there we go. I think we got most of it in here. Let me see. Scoot it over a little bit. There we go. Uh, okay, so star um, designation, HD154914. Right, one, one, five, four, nine, one, four. All right. Night number eight. Night number eight, right there. Right. The black things are the holes, right? Um, don't know what this is up here though. Do you see these holes up here? I yeah, I don't know anything about punch cards at all. That was before my time. Um, um, hour angle, one hour nine minutes. Right, so one, oh one zero. Right, one zero nine zero. I guess, um, and then all zeros. Right, and then negative fifteen forty three. So I guess, you know, having these two there designates a negative and then one, five, four, three, right? Um, I'm not quite sure what the BY gain is, but it's 245, two, you have zero, two, four, five, right? The U gain is, is 255, zero, two, five, five. The U, whatever that is, um, it's probably some kind of a, some kind of a, count right or some kind of a measurement right some kind of a brightness because u u b and v are are um, filters um, that are used and so this is some kind of a measurement you know some kind of a um, photon yeah i'm not exactly sure sure what anyway so zero five one one right b is 43.9 so 43 uh, no, uh, oh, okay, that gets a little confusing. It looks like it's all compressed there. Um, and then standard source, not exactly sure what that is either. There's a 77.2, and, that, and that's it. So, so yeah, you know, this hey, is uh, a... Tom Benz, we was, he was using IBM mainframes when he started working. Don't think there were the 650 variants. Probably a later version. Punch cards and lots of printouts. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean by 32 mg? That's what I want to know. Yeah, they were only 32 mg. I'm not exactly sure what that means either, Andy. Um, like mega bits and stuff, because I think you never heard of bytes way back when. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, so yeah, okay. Well, there is. There's a punch card. Let's uh, let's rotate this back. I think otherwise everything's going to be uh, all messed up. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Okay, let's <laughs> let's keep let's keep going here. This is fun. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, program, of course, you know, consists of a series of instructions stored in the memory. Um, here's some commonly used operation codes. Here, I'll, I'll zoom in again so we can really see this. So, okay, yeah. Um, data addresses. Here's the accumulators, right? 
Cool. Subroutines. Yeah, so, you know, computing, you know, like the magnitude of something, um, you'd want to put that into a subroutine so you don't have to, you know, call it every single time or, you know, write it out every single time you you need it. You, you just write it once and then you call it, you know, from your main um, routine. That's that's exactly how it's done today. So, yeah, you know, a lot of computer um, 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 sort of the operations and stuff uh, is done exactly the same way today um, like it was, you know, back then. Um, just, you know, a few, a few of the details have, have, have changed, but, you know, the, you know, basic um, thinking and all of that, uh, and um, 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 maybe Tom, you know, can correct me on this, but I think, you know, sort of the basic thinking of things hasn't really changed all, all that much. And of course, you know, that gets into computer science. Um, so I don't know what all this stuff is. It just looks like a bunch of data, I guess. Yeah, I guess this is some kind of a, uh, here, let's go. Do they actually give an explanation because they, okay, so, okay, yeah. This is the entire program, right? They've laid out an entire program here. Oh, that's 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 great! Wow. And I mean, you know, in machine code, which is essentially what this is, nothing's changed, right? You know, the instructions might be slightly different, but uh, you know, how it's done uh, is 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 still being done exactly the same way today. It's just all you know, sort of buried. Um, so here's a sample program, right? Um, it's intended for general use um, in the reduction of three color um, photoelectric observations. Wow, very cool. Words and bytes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Output. Locations um, utilized. Here's the calculation of air mass. Very cool. I like it. Infrared leak. Correction for extinction, right? That's actually what I'm um, working on, on, on now. I realized that, well, I thought that I wouldn't have to uh, um, deal with extinction, but <laughs> it turns out that I I do. Well, here's here's how you have know, to figure all that out, all laid out. Okay, here's a here's a little flow chart showing the entire the entire thing. So read a card, convert um, declination. Here, let's uh, let's zoom in. So convert this um, delta here. That's a declination, and um, the hour angle to um, decimals of a circle. Um, sine to cosine, compute seek z, which is the um, um, the air mass. Rearrange data in memory compute the ratios blue to, to, to V and U to B, compute the magnitude. Wow, yeah, it's all, it's all here. Very cool, <laughs> very nice. I'm gonna get all nostalgic, all right. Tom Van Scott, basic have not changed that very much. Yep, hasn't, hasn't not. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, recommending that, you know, if you want to get into this a little bit, this is a really, really, really great place to start because it gives you um, not only, you know, sort of the basic, basic understanding of things, 
but it it dives really really deep into stuff right i mean this is not you know none of this is is easy or for the faint of heart at all right here's um two exposures of the crab nebula right um taken with the uh, 200 inch polymer observatory uh very cool um so um and they're talking about the analyzer. I guess that's, um, they're talking about um, polarization here. So they must've had a polarizer on it and you know, they photographed it at one um, polarization angle and, and then they made another photograph at a slightly different angle. Yeah, see here the, uh, you can sort of see here this EV equals 90 and then EV equals um, 135. And look how different that looks, just looking at, you know, different angles of polarity. It's, it, the, yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So a lot of information, you know, can be gleaned from that kind of stuff, you know, looking at the differences between these. Uh, so cool, very, very cool. Yeah, you know, they're just sort of showing how, how you know, the polarization works and all of that, very cool. All right, well, that's about as much as I wanted, you know, to get into that. I just, I was, I was really, really thrilled to, to have uh, been, been reminded of this book. Um, and, you know, the fact that, that, uh, um, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and, you know, this is available for free, I think. Did I post a link to this over on the Discord server? I think I might have. So, so uh, um, you know, if you're so inclined. Do you know um, what channel on the Discord? What um, room? I don't know. Let's, let's go, let's go look because I, thought that I put it over there, but maybe I put it under science. Yes, I put it under science. science. So yeah, you know, that, uh, that, that's a, a great, great book. You know, if you want to, you know, spend a nice relaxing afternoon, <laughs> uh, um, go grab it. Cause it's, uh, uh, it, it is um, um, definitely a gem, and and uh, um, uh, you know, just going through you know the type you know the the uh, um, the um, table of contents, right? Just a wealth of information, just a wealth. And like I said, you know, some of this is a little outdated, a little bit, but not really a lot, not really a lot. Um, most of this is still extremely relevant um, today. And uh, uh, you will definitely learn a lot. You will learn a lot, you know, just by going through this. And like I say, you know, all, all the time, you know, don't, don't worry too much if you don't understand a lot of it, right? Look at the pictures, look at the, you know, the captions, you know, underneath um, the pictures. <laughs> Um, and see if you can make, you know, heads or tails out of any of that, right? Um, sort of see, you know, what they're talking about and, and, uh, um, you know, you'll get something out of it, right? Um, and, you know, if you want to know, know more, well, you have to be, um, patient, right? With yourself, um, and, you know, look at these things read about um, what they're talking about and, and uh, you will, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, you know, if you want to, you'll gain a good understanding of all this stuff. And, and, uh, but, uh, you know, as, as with almost everything, right. Uh, it can get complicated really fast. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really, really, really easy uh, to, uh, <laughs> You know, to take a look at something like this and just be like, what? 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 What's all the squiggly lines, right? And all the numbers and, and you know, 
all that. But, you know, rest assured, you know, that they will uh, explain it, at least, you know, to their best ability. Um, it's sort of up to you, you know, to figure it out, make all the connections. Uh, you know, if you don't understand certain terms, you, you might have to, you know, go elsewhere. But, you know, these days, that's really, really easy to do, right? Back in 1962, uh, if you wanted to find out anything, you went to the library, right? Uh, and then, you know, maybe there was something there about it. So, so uh, you know, today, we just have to, you know, Google everything. So, uh, so yeah, very, very cool. Um, I like the, uh, I like all the instrumentation stuff, stuff too. They, uh, um, yeah, here's some, here's a spectrograph, right? Um, actually the one that, that they used at the 60 inch um, telescope, Mount um, Wilson, right? I think that's the one, uh, isn't that the one right next to Los Angeles, isn't that it? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, there's sort of the inside of it there. Here, let's, let's really look inside here, right? Complicated little thing. But that's, that's what uh, even modern day um, um, spectroscopes, that's pretty much what's inside, right? Not quite sure what the light path is here. I think it probably comes in this way and then gets you know reflected all around. There's probably a grating or a prism in here. Um, maybe, I, I mean, they didn't have necessarily cameras back then, you know, but maybe this is where you put your film. Not exactly sure. Yeah. Very cool though, very cool. Okay, yeah, here's sort of a diagram. Huh. Of another kind of um, spectrograph, radio velocity determinations. Here's another spectrograph, right? Lots of different kinds of spectrographs. Here's some prisms in here. You see that? Triangles like that. Bending, bending the light around. Here's an actual spectrum, right? Taken with a photograph. Very cool. Actually, you know doing some line identification here. See these, these lines on the side here? These are references, right? So what they would do, um, and this is still done today, right? Um, not exactly you know, the same, same way, but um, before their observations, they would go into the lab and um, they would, have these these lamps, you know, like neon lamps. Um, um, and sort of in this case, you know, we're looking at, at uh, iron, right? So you'd have a special kind of lamp that, that, that would uh, emit light at these various wavelengths, right? Um, and then they take the spectrum of their object, which is this thing here. And you can see all these absorption lines in here, right? All these absorption lines. And they would match them up to you know, the laboratory lines. And um, you know, they try to identify them. And it sort of looks like, um, you know, it looks like there's a little bit of shift. So I'm not exactly sure what this is. Okay, this is just, um, this is just a spectrum of a, of a star. Um, but it has, you know, a certain um, velocity. And so here we go, right? Um, so in, in this case, you know, this star is um, um, moving away from us at a, you know, pretty good, good clip. And so what you see, right, is that here's the iron line here as part of the standard, you know, the reference, but here's the iron, iron line here and it's shifted towards the red, right? Just like it should be if something is moving away from us, right? So here's an example of um, Doppler shift. Here's another um, iron line, right? So this line here is actually that line, but it's been uh, shifted a little tiny bit. And the amount of that shift um, will allow you to measure, you know, well, 
if you agree, you know, with the idea that there is a Doppler shift, you know, that there is a red shift, which, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that is probably a valid, um, um, valid idea. Um, if you can measure the shift in wavelength, then you can know how this object is moving. And so this is a way, you know, to measure um, radio velocity. And here's a perfect example of that, right? See, here's another one. Um, now, not, you know, I don't know if all of these lines are um, represented. It looks like this um, reference um, spectrum is sort of uh, iron lines, right? I mean, I'm not seeing like the hydrogen line line here, but we're definitely seeing a hydrogen line um, within the spectrum of the star, which makes sense, right? Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, very, very cool. It's kind of nice to see those. Um, um, and, you know, even today, um, the astronomers, they, they also collect um, spectra this exact same way, but instead, of course, of putting the light on a photographic plate, They'll put it on a CCD, right? And then they'll do exactly the same thing. You know, they'll do the line identification. What they usually do, right? Um, like I was um, talking about um, yesterday, is that they'll they'll run a profile plot, you know, right across here. And so you'll see, you know, these dips, you know, where it gets dark, like that, right? Um, so yeah, very cool. Very cool. Pretty interesting as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I really sort of like to see this this, you know, older stuff because it it um, sometimes makes it easier to understand you know what's happening now. Um, so, okay, here's a comparator, right? A blink of comparator, right? Very cool. Let's see what else we got. Oh, I love the pictures. Yeah. Love the pictures. Let's see if there's anything else here. Spectrophotometry. I wanted to, uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to show you guys the photometers because that's kind of fun. Uh, 200. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if we can look at a few of these. Things. I'll go all the way up to the top here so we can uh, really indulge ourselves a little bit. Like I said, you know, just looking at the pictures can, can you know, really get you a long, a long way. So here's a schematic. Let me rotate this. Of a um, photoelectric um, photometer, right? So here's the light coming in from the telescope, right, over here. And of course, it's um, focusing in, right? Um, you've got a little pickoff mirror here that, you know, is um, reflecting a little bit of the light and transmitting a little bit of the light. That, that way, you can put an eyepiece here and actually, you know, look at what you're seeing. There's the focus. Let's see, it goes through, okay, there's another one here. Okay, so uh, there's a microscope for what they're saying is um, viewing the focal plane diaphragm. So that's that's a uh, um, um, just a circular um, uh, a hole through which, and in fact, here it is, right here, right? So this is just a way, you know, to look look at this diaphragm here, right? Which is, you know, um, usually, you know, just a piece of metal that has a hole in it um, through which the light goes. And, you know, there's some uh, um, lenses and filters and all that. And then here, here's the photometer itself back here. So very cool. So let's, I'm sure they have some pictures of them. Oh, come on, here we go. So there's a little bit more of that. 
individual components. The uh, sort of the most commonly used um, photomultiplier tube was this thing called a 1P21. And I'm going to, I'm going to get up just for a second and walk over, walk over to another bookshelf because I want to show you another book that I think I've got over there. Hold on. I'll be right back in just a second here. I'll, uh, let me put you on a picture here of a, of an actual, see, they even have schematics and stuff. Uh, oh, um, Let's see, I wanna, I, th I thought I saw some, some pictures here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, hold on, I'll be right back. Let's see if I can find it. Do I, can I find it? Ooh. Huh. Oh. oh, I thought I had it over here. I have it over here. Um, ba -bum -ba -bum. Ah, shoot. All right. Well, I'll have to find that other book. It's a great, a great, great, great book. It's it's called uh, Zen and the Art of Photoelectric Photometry. Now, you folks have probably heard of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle um, Maintenance. Well, this is just a spoof off of that. Um, but oh, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, well. Anyway, so there's a complete um, photoelectric um, photometer, uh, as was used back in the day. So this is a single um, channel, right? So only one, one um, filter um, was actually used. And I think they've got a picture of a dual channel one, too, here. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah, see, here's a a dual channel one, you know, with two filters on it. And of course, you know, two photometers. And there's a picture of that. Isn't that cool looking? So this part here, way, way, way down here, that would actually mount onto the bottom of the telescope, right? And then you've got an eyepiece here, you know, to look. And, you know, a bunch of um, micrometers here, you know, to um, measure things and dials and all that. And then here in these boxes, well, you know, here would be um, like the filters and a couple of lenses. And then in these boxes are the actual um, 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 photomultiplier tubes themselves, these uh, 1P21s here. And here's a three, three channel one. Wow. So, you know, that just makes things more efficient, right? If you can, um, if you can observe, you know, the same star at three different um, wavelengths simultaneously, right? U, B, and V, which are sort of you know the standard um, filters, then that just makes you know making these observations uh, um, um, very very. Um, efficient. And in fact, wow, look at this. This is a, a six channel one. Now I'm not, ex you know, I mean, they've got it labeled here, UB and V and UB and V. I'm not quite sure why they would want to observe. Oh, I see why. Look at that. Wow. So going one way, right? Light is coming in this way. You put the star light going through this one and the background sky going through that one. So this is like a complete system here. Yeah, wow. That's pretty amazing. I, 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 wonder, if, I wonder if he's got a picture of that. Six channel. <laughs> Six channels. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't... Uh, is that... There it is. Yeah. So there's... Oh, let's try to zoom out, I guess. Um, telescope is up here. So, okay, let me rotate this, this away. So there it is. Okay, yeah, so here's the telescope 
up here, right, going upwards. Here's a little, you know, like a guide scope or something over here. Looks like some kind of electronic cabinet. Not quite sure what's going on there. Um, and then, yeah, he, here's you know the photometer itself, right, with with all all six um, tubes in there and all six um, filters and all that. Wow, pretty pretty amazing. It looks like um, I'm sort of seeing a right ascension uh, thing here, here, here too. So yeah, very cool. Doesn't say what telescope that is, so I'm not quite sure about that. But yeah, it's kind of cool to be seeing this kind of equipment. This is a great book. This is really, really a great book. I like it. Uh, yeah, so pulse counting. Let's see if there's any other. Here's more schematics, right? I mean, you can build your own, right? Here's all that you need to do that, right? Here's all the numbers, everything. You can build your own. Let's do it. All right, well, cool, cool. I, um, I'm looking at the time and wow, it's already been a little bit over an hour. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna check the chat here really quick, see if there's anything um, anything going on. There we go. Okay, very very good. Uh, doesn't look like anything going on over there. So yeah, you know what? It's um just past the hour. Maybe I'm gonna if if as long as I push the right buttons here. Stop sharing. There we go. Um, yeah, I think you know. Let's let's uh, let's call it let's call it a, a finished live stream here. I uh, I really didn't mean to uh, spend the entire time on that book, but it is it's a fantastic book. I mean, we could literally spend months and months and months just just in that book, right? Um, it's so it's so full of of Great, great, great stuff. I promise that we probably won't. But um, I'm actually going to look through this um, uh, and see if there's anything, you know, sort of relevant. Um, and and uh, you know, once in a while, I think I'm going to pull it out. You know, like I do um, with a lot of the books that I have here. You know, my Burnhams that don't have any covers on them anymore, um, because uh, you know, I think I think you know. Um, 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 being in astronomy, um, having a lot of, you know, references and a lot of, of useful information, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, at, at hand um, is really, really a nice thing. You know, you wake up in the middle of the night, it's like, oh, you know, I'm sort of wondering about this. Um, it's, it's getting easier and easier, right, you know, to find the kind of information we, we want. But, um, you know, these books are pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome. So, all right. Well, I think for now, I'm going to get out of here. So just as a reminder, tomorrow's live stream is canceled. So the one for January 16th, 2019, um, I am just not going to be here. I'm going to be on the road. Um, probably going to be getting in a little bit late. So yeah, you know, it's just a lot easier, you know, just to cancel um, tomorrow. I don't see any reason why I won't be back the next day. So, um, so yeah, I think the next time that we'll be be together, or um, well, or at least I'll be here, um, and probably many of us will be here. Very cool. Um, is going to be for the seventeenth of um, January, right? So tomorrow's live stream canceled barely drunk any water at all because I got into that book. And, you know, great, great, great book. So cheers. Yeah. And I will see you all in a little, well, what? In a little less than 48 hours um, from now, probably more like 47-ish or so. Something like that. Uh, I will be counting the minutes. hours and did you five minutes? There you go. There, there you go. Very cool. Very cool. So, so yeah. 
I always look forward to this. This is great fun, and and uh, um, great, great, great people. You all are are very, very awesome. Very, very fun, and and uh, you know. Um, I think if this was was work or a job or any kind of an obligation, you know, that I sort of felt, you know, that I had to do, I would have stopped this long, long, long ago. But um, you know, this is extremely fun because it's so easy. Um, you know, because I'm I'm not really trying, you know, to do anything here except you know just share a passion um, and sort of share you know the journey. Um, and I think that's a lot of fun. So, all right, everybody, I am going to get out of here. So take care, have a great evening, a great day. And yeah, I'll see you in a couple spins. So peace, cheers and all that. I will see you later. Bye. Bye.